Guillermo, thank you. Ashler, the bricks to be laid, wait silently, unused until the master mason turns to them. The waiting can be long. Uh, the Temple of Solomon, it is written, required the labors of no fewer than 3,300 master masons and three grand masters for seven years and six days. I would like to share a similar tale, one with, of an enduring friendship between the governor of California and his highway patrolman uh, driver. The two shared long uh, trips to Hangtown, to the city, to, uh, or deep into the uh, fertile valleys that uh, ringed Sacramento. Earl Warren and Edgar Patterson came from similar backgrounds. Warren from Bakersfield, Patterson from New Orleans. One was the governor of California, the other a capital policeman. The two men met in 1939. Warren, newly elected as uh, governor, uh, excuse me, as a uh, California attorney general, whom a uh, clerk described as rather intimidating, uh, happened to meet an intensely studious uh, Pat Patterson. What was he reading, uh, Warren asked. Patterson explained he was trying to rectify the state penal code and the Bible. Subsequently, Warren would stop by uh, Patterson's desk on uh, trips to the Capitol from his office in Oakland. They would uh, momentarily grapple with conflicts between the scripture and law. Patterson recalled in an interview, we got to be very, very close. Four years later, as uh, Warren ran for governor for the first time, the confident candidate uh, approached uh, Patterson. If elected, he would arrange for Patterson's transfer as his personal chauffeur. He wanted Patterson to look after his wife and children. I'll, I'll take care of you and your kids, Patterson played, uh, pledged. The governor treated for colon cancer. Uh, doctors ordered him to decrease his uh, crowded schedule. Uh, Warren and Patterson took long drives into the foothills of the Sierra, Nevada. On one of these trips, Patterson recalled uh, the two of them sitting under a tree in the mountains. He mused, you know, you and I, we would not be here if uh, you were black. Warren asked Patterson, why? Your life would be di have been different. You would never have been governor. You would never have been attorney general. Your whole life would have been different. I school graduate himself, Patterson had listed in the Navy in World War II and found himself assigned to the only job open to him as a mess man. One day scrubbing pots, the next day setting tables for sailors who were both white uh, and uh, free. His was not the only such experience, Patterson told uh, Warren, that uh, black college graduates could find work only in the ba on the back of tra uh, garbage trucks. Uh, black women qualified only as waitresses. If they sometimes applied for one of the prohibited positions, uh, their application found its way into the circular file. Even the qualified uh, had trouble. Uh, black women could only teach black children. The schools, particularly in his hometown of New Orleans, were rigidly segregated. So were the restaurants. I couldn't eat in those that announced uh, that were on for whites only. Jim Crow thrived, even in post-war California, and I do remember this very well. I also remember uh, the street, the empty streets of downtown Los Angeles, uh, where the uh, Japanese were evacuated. Restrictive covenants bar barred blacks from white-only neighborhoods, guarded by white, who, me, real estate brokers? Certain shops uh, did not welcome Patterson and his wife, he told Warren. They were careful to choose restaurants where they understood they were welcome. As Patterson recalled those uh, long-ago conversations, Warren would get very angry. 
bills to create both a fair employment commission and fair housing laws lay dormant in the uh, legislative committees. It would take time. You know, Warren advised, we have to be very careful who we fight and whether we are going to win. Ashlar, the bricks waited. The story has been told how Earl Warren, governor of California, became Chief Justice of the United States. At the Republican Convention of 1960, uh, Eisenhower was locked in a struggle for delegates with, uh, 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 with Ohio's uh, Robert Taft. In an early procedural vote, Dark Horse candidate uh, Warren pledged his California's delegation to back Ike. The stampede was on. In return, Eisenhower promised the first vacancy on the Supreme Court of the United States. <clears throat> As an aside, I might point out that uh, D uh, Dwight David Eisenhower denounced his decision. Uh, the biggest, it was the biggest damn fool thing I ever did. Still, Warren was uniquely qualified for the high court. He had spent 10 years as governor of California, the longest serving governor until that time. Incidentally, the incumbent uh, just recently passed uh, uh, Warren in length of service. Deemed a politician, Warren was considered a superlative administrator, certainly one who could administer the frequently quarrelsome federal judiciary. As district attorney of Alameda County, and later as attorney general, of uh, California, he certainly knew criminal law. Warren's appointment was not universally hailed. He was criticized for not being a scholar uh, of the law. Conservative critics, who dominated the American Bar Association, uh, bitterly protested that Warren had not uh, been seasoned by a service on the lower court, uh, lower federal court. In fact, only two of the 13 chief justices before Warren had even spent, uh, had, uh, even spent their careers as working lawyers. Most of them had found their way to the president's cabinet, then moved from there to the high court. Moreover, the two chiefs considered to be the greatest in the court's history, John Marshall and Charles Evans Hughes, had never sat as a judge prior to, the, uh, to joining the high court. As a civil libertarian, uh, Warren had a checkered uh, record. He had endorsed President Roosevelt's uh, 1942 order to evacuate Japanese nationals as well as Americans of Japanese American uh, heritage. His explanation was simple, if wrong-headed. He feared an imminent uh, invasion the United States had lost track of the Japanese fleet that bombed Pearl Harbor. Uh, and the United States had just one destroyer uh, to range the Pacific coast uh, and thwart an invasion. Uh, not for nothing were they known as tin cans. With the end of the war, uh, he reversed that sorry record. When the Army released the Japanese Americans, Warren defended their right to live where they, uh, where they chose. Uh, in the National Guard's 40th Infantry Division was returned to state control at war's end, he de desegregated the unit. He welcomed a federal court order striking down segregated schools for Indian children or children of Japanese, uh, Chinese, Japanese, or Mongolian heritage, unquote. As Warren told a law clerk later, somewhat later, I believe uh, in one law, for all men. Fred Vinson, the incumbent Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, was a, a different breed of cat. Fred and Vinson lacked the stature necessary to bind the chi uh, together the Chief Justices. Decisions tended to follow the dictates uh, intoned by the Department of uh, Governor, by the government, uh, and the Department of Defense attorneys. The court docket in this 1953-54 term was, as usual, crowded. The biggest file came in the form of a petition on the Reverend uh, Oliver Brown. If I can pause here, I have looked through those documents uh, repeatedly. Uh, 
in Washington, and I can tell you that uh, I came across a, a draft of the order, the initial order that Warren wrote in longhand, and I made a Xerox copy of it immediately, and then I took it up to the desk, and I said, I don't think this belongs here. And uh, he took one look at it, and he gasped, and he said, it doesn't. Um, so that now you will find a Xerox copy <laughs> uh, of the uh, original order that Warren wrote himself in longhand uh, in that file. Um, the court's docket in this 1953 uh, term uh, was, as usual, crowded. But the biggest file came in the form of the petition of the uh, Reverend Oliver Brown, critical of the education his daughter received in the all-black schools of Topeka, Kansas. The Reverend sought to overturn a century of judicial precedence. The prevailing standard, which many in the South deemed unalterable, was the precedent of Plessy versus Ferguson. In 1890, the state legislature of Louisiana adopted a bill, quote, to promote the uh, comfort of passengers, unquote. That law required railway companies carrying passengers in their coaches in the state to provide uh, equal but separate uh, facilities for white and colored races. Homer Adolph Plessy, just one-eighth black, took a seat in the whites-only section of a Louisiana railway train bound from New Orleans to Covington, 30 miles away. Judge John A. Ferguson rejected Plessy's contention that the segregation statute violated his uh, rights under the 14th Amendment. Mr. Plessy's case wound its way to the Supreme Court. Their Associate Justice Henry uh, Billings Brown, as lackluster a man as ever sat on the Supreme Court of the United States, wrote a seven to one decision. Louisiana was free to adopt any law in accordance with the established uses, quote, established uses, customs, and traditions of the people and with a, a view to the promotion of the comfort and preservation of the public peace and good order, wrote Brown in his decision. Plessy's attorneys uh, argued futilely that, they, uh, that uh, social prejudices might be overcome by legislation. If one race be inferior to the other socially, Brown wrote in rejection, uh, the Constitution cannot put them on the same plane. Under the sham of separate but equal, Jim Crow gripped the states of the former Confederacy. Separate schools, separate bathrooms, separate water fountains, separate swimming pools. Additionally, uh, four states present, uh, pre uh, permitted local option, including Kansas. Reverend Brown's case, joined with four similar suits, first came to the high court in December uh, on December 9, 1951. The court was sharply divided. Vincent vote, uh, spoke first in conference defending Plessy from his old uh, with his old defederants uh, or of the old confederacy. Fred Vinson lost his chance for judicial greatness. Now the first master mason stepped in. Felix Frankfurter favored delay. He argued that a narrow decision in such a major case, quote, would have been catastrophic, unquote. Frankfurter proposed that the court ask the attorneys to re-argue whether the 14th Amendment, in fact, covered school desegregation. If so, could Congress uh, merely make segregation illegal? Further, would uh, the court's uh, decision uh, be immediately imposed or gradually phased in. Finally, if the court ruled uh, for the gradual approach, how would the de uh, decree be written? Frankfurter was stalling. Then fate intruded. 
corpulent Fred Vinson, pl- poker player to with, with one president, bridge player with another, uh, suffered a fatal heart attack. This is the first indication that I have ever heard that there was a God, a relieved Frankfurter, uh, told his two law clerks. The Ashlar waited. Earl Warren uh, was not President's first choice uh, for the role of Chief Justice. Warren insisted the first promised appointment meant the first appointment. President Eisenhower, probably fearing a leak of some kind, uh, and I'm guessing there, capitulated. The first appointment meant the first vacancy, and the vacancy was that of the Chief Justice, and it made no difference. On Monday, December 7th, 1953, the clerk of the uh, Supreme Court called the appeal of the Reverend uh, Brown. Appearing uh, for the school boards was John W. Davis, a a veteran of 140 cases argued in that very court, once Solicitor General of the United States, uh, once Ambassador to the Court of St. James, one-time Democratic nominee uh, for President of the United States. Born in West Virginia, uh, Davis shared the prejudices of his time he would defend Plessy as precedent hardened into law. Ranged against Davis was Thurgood Marshall, deemed by the press as a spokesman for black America. Unlike Davis, Marshall knew no privileges, no high court, uh, no high office. Instead, he boasted that uh, to a forebearer, that a forebearer was the baddest nigger uh, in the whole state of Maryland. Armed with a diploma from uh, Howard Law, Marshall joined the uh, legal staff of the uh, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People in 1936. There he joined Charles Houston, the director of the legal staff, and Edward Hasty, a uh, a Harvard uh, graduate. The three would shape dozens of cases challenging Jim Crow in state courts with the hope that wisdom would prevail upon appeal. Marshall, cons- uh, Marshall uh, considered, Warren's, uh, considered Brown's appeal less a legal case and more a righteous crusade. He stumbled on the first day, but rallied on the next. Children played in the streets, but were separated uh, when they went to school. Quote, if they go to school, elementary school uh, and high school together, the world will fall apart. Uh, he, he said sarcastically, obviously. The court heard uh, three days of arguments. On the following uh, Saturday, the justices met to discuss the segregation cases. Warren, as chief, spoke first. Warren asserted, the court has finally arrived at a place where it must determine whether segregation is allowable in public schools. The master mason had spoken. For his part, uh, Warren told uh, historian uh, Kluger, it was a simple case. The court had chipped away at the doctrine of separate but equal. equal. The court had come to a, a... The court had finally come to an end of it. Only the fact of segregation itself remained uh, unconsidered. Shorn of emotion, Warren added, it seemed to me that it was a comparatively simple case. The more he read, the more he thought about it, uh, Warren told Kluger, the more he had come to the conclusion that separate uh, uh, that segregation and separate but equal rested on a single belief. The Negro race was inherently uh, inferior to the white. That rankled. Warren had a majority of the court. Uh, Hugo Black, William O. Douglas, Sherman Minton, and Harold Burton would join Warren to declare that separate was not equal uh, in fact and in law. But Warren sought um, uh, more than a five to four decision. He wanted an overwhelming majority, even a unanimous decision, reversing more than 50 years of precedent. Warren 
convened a second full conference on January 16, 1954. The Southerners, Black of Alabama, Clark of Texas, and uh, Reed of Kentucky feared an uh, order that would precipitously end desegregation. They favored allowing each state to find its own way. Warren concurred. My instincts and feelings, uh, Warren stress, lead me to say that in these cases, we should abolish the practice of segregation in the public schools, but in a tolerant way. Warren framed the argument for desegregation in moral terms. Even Stanley Reed could agree there was no inferior race, uh, including the tangible concession, though they may be handicapped by lack of uh, opportunity. In informal meetings, uh, Warren repeatedly visited the uh, associate justices in their um, uh, offices. Warren pressed for two results. First, a unanimous decision that would demonstrate the court was unshakable. And second, a terse ruling encumbered, uh, unencumbered by uh, concurring uh, opinions that might dilute the legal authority upon which they were overturning Plessy. One by one, uh, Warren, uh, Earl Warren laid Ashlar. One by one, the holdout justices came around to Warren's strategy. He was courtly, solicitous of others' opinion, but firm in his own. Segregation was an evil to be eradicated. One by one, the Southerners signed on to the opinion. First Black, then Tom Clark, Masons by choice, laying brick. Finally, there was only the troubled Stanley Reed standing in the way of unanimous court. Warren again walked down the hall. Stan, you're by yourself on in this now. We've got to decide whether it's really the best thing for the country. A Southerner dissenting would only provide an excuse for the irreconcilables to provoke resistance. Warren understood the political reality. Or, excuse me, Reed understood the political rally, uh, reality. The last brick had been laid. Turning their backs on a lifetime of segregation, Warren uh, later noted, were the men who were really entitled to the credit for making the decision uh, unanimous. The temple was complete. There is no hint in the ruling of the first pages of, of Warren's decision uh, for the court. The tension mounted. We come to the question presented, does the segregation of children in public schools rely on the basis of race, uh, even though the physical facilities and other tangible f factors uh, deprive the children of equal, uh, of the minority group of equal education op opportunities? We unanimously hold that it does. Ashlar, the long conversations uh, of race the governor had with his chauffeur some uh, 12 years before. Ashlar, a black man educating a white man. Ashlar, that is, evil banished by morality. <laughs>